PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. What are they? Should you be taking them? And should you maybe think about taking a bit of a break? Welcome to Talking <laughs> with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. I'm Dr. Brad Wing. So we're talking about proton pump inhibitors. And I love that name, proton pump inhibitor. I mean, I've been involved in some medicine development, but nothing yeah. as cool as a proton pump inhibitor. Yeah. Even just a proton pump. It's good. Yeah, you got a new proton pump. You want to come check it out? Yeah. So, so like a turbocharger. What is, what is the pro? What's the proton pump? What a is proton it? Proton pump is a really cool name <laughs> for an enzyme in your stomach yeah. that actually helps transport the hydrogen ion, yep. the proton, into the stomach so they can bond with chloride in yep. your stomach to form hydrochloric acid, which you need in your stomach to digest your food and make things sterile. Right. It's an actual enzyme, the H plus K plus ATP ACE, I right. think it is. So it's, yep. an, it's a protein. It's an enzyme that uses energy to pump these protons into the right place so that you can turn them into acid. Right, so this parietal cell, cells in your stomach, that's what secretes this thing and, and allows our, us to get a nice low pH in our stomach, which is, is good for a lot of things, kills uh, pathogens, breaks down our food, but sometimes it can get out of control. And you can get reflux disease, which is probably the number one reason that people think about, so heartburn, yeah. and that can lead to other more serious complications mm -hmm. like esophagitis and even cancer. Yeah. So a lot of people are on these types of medications at any given time 10 to 15 percent of north americans are taking a ppi because you want to eat the suicide chicken wing right as opposed to the mild right and so the question is well wow it's it's really cool that we have this drug that works amazing this works very quickly works in two to three hours it irreversibly binds to this enzyme so that it doesn't work and so when you stop taking the drug your body actually makes more of this new enzyme so that you can get function back um, so there is a treatment for it, but there are potential consequences. That's it. Just like anything. Just say it with us. Say it with us. Whenever there's a treatment or a medicine or something, there's always the risk of side effects or complications. Always. And right. You have to be aware of it. And, and on the big pharma side, this was a drug that sold 14 billion in sales, I think, in 2010. And then now that it's genericized, actually sales are like three and a half million. More people are taking it. Lots of prescriptions. Million or are billion. billion? Billion with a yeah. B, yeah. yeah. So, but it's gone down 75% because of... Uh, Dollar-wise, yes. but not pill-wise. Not pill-wise. So lots of people are taking it. Now you can get it over the counter. OTC. And the trouble is, the longer that you take it, then when you stop, you get something called rebound hypersecretion. So it's very hard to get off of these medications. Um, so yeah. So... Harper. Right, you get Harper. Okay, so they work. They work... Uh, Very reducing well. your heartburn, which is which can be dangerous, right? If you have a lot of reflux into your esophagus and burning, you could end up with some complications. Yeah. You can end up with an ulcer. You can end up with cancer. Bad yeah. things can happen. That's why it's important to control that symptom right. and to work it up appropriately because it could be representing something else that's going on. Yes. However, like any treatment, there's some side effects, complications that can happen with taking this medicine. And first off, do not stop taking it because of this video. Talk to your doctor, your gastroenterologist, your family, whoever's prescribed it, just to discuss it, how long you've been on it, why you're taking it, what the long-term plan That's is. That's why we're called Talking with Docs, because right. you want to go talk to your doc about certain things, and we want to just educate you a little bit so you can have some educated questions for your healthcare provider. So sh short-term, I'd say it's very safe. There are very minimal side effects to the drug itself, mm -hmm. um, but longer-term um, is where the concerns start to come. So let, let's start with, we're gonna do top five. So the number one concern is nutritional deficiency. So because of this acid that is critical to mm. absorb vitamins and minerals and other nutrients from our food, we need this, it makes sense. Your, your yeah. body is a smart um, being that has figured out a way to extract stuff from our food. So if you increase your pH to make it more alkaline, and then you cannot absorb stuff properly, it's gonna cause problems, particularly for, for calcium and B12 are probably the big two, but also magnesium. So yeah. beware of this and supplement accordingly. I think that's an obvious one. It does seem pretty, right. sorry. That's obvious, Yeah. right? It's like if, like if you developed a technique that sewed your mouth shut, yeah. one of the complications would be malnutrition. Fair, fair okay. enough. Okay. So yours was obvious. Okay. So my next one's not so obvious. Okay. There is a significant increase in bone fractures. In fact, this is how we came about doing yes. this video. You, yeah. you were researching some bone fracture stuff and you came up with this yes. and that sort of led you down a rabbit hole. Right. And so, so how much does the risk go up? Well, it goes up a lot more than we thought. Yes. And some studies have shown up to 10 to 50% increased risk of fracture if you're yes. on these medications. Right. And, and, and it's funny because often we never really thought about it, but a lot of times when we're admitting our patients with fractures yep. or taking a history in our fracture clinics, we find a lot of people are on these kinds of medications. Right, and it's kind of where, where vitamin D and calcium work is in the primarily the first part of your small intestine. And so when acid is reduced, it reduces our body's ability to absorb 
absorb calcium. So I could argue that yours is really obvious. So if my nutritional deficiency is obvious, maybe if you don't get enough calcium, obviously calcium, you're gonna problem with your bones. Yours is like right there in your face. Mine <laughs> had a step that led to the bone. Problem. Okay, well here, number three, I would say is definitely not necessarily intuitive or obvious is kidney disease. So this has been shown to increase your incidence of interstitial nephritis, uh, chronic kidney disease, as well as into full-on kidney failure. So there's yeah. something to be aware of. Obviously, if your doctor's gonna prescribe this and they're worried about this, they would do some routine blood work to keep an eye on this. We have some videos about, you know, how am I gonna know if I have kidney failure? You should consider watching them and keep an eye on your kidney function. And we, we our kidneys are critical for us yeah. to be alive, so you gotta really protect them. And they're not super forgiving. So you gotta be careful. No, no, kudos to your kidneys. Yes. I wouldn't have guessed the kidney one. I would have guessed the nutrition, could have guessed the bone fracture, I couldn't have guessed the kidney. Okay, how about number four? I could have guessed this one. Okay. And you could too. You're, gonna, you're susceptible to different infections. One of the purposes of the acid in your stomach is to sterilize the non-sterile stuff that you put in your mouth. But wait, wait a second, I thought, I thought these helped reduce your risk of getting H. pylori, H. pylori. and the, the thing that causes ulcers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's an infection that does cause, also it does Prevent, it does help prevent that infection. So reduces that infection. But other infections like yeah. C. difficile. Which is the bad one. Clostridium species, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, it, it that that can increase your risk of getting the, that kind of, a, of yeah, an so infection. You, so you get rid of one infection, but you get another. And that, that's going to be very serious. You're robbing Peter to pay Paul, which normally I'm okay with. Yes. But in this setting. Okay, and sure. the last one is gastric cancer. And the exact mechanism that they're not totally sure of, but you can understand that if you upset the normal milieu mm. of your stomach, May we. yeah, it's gonna allow certain cells to grow more and other cells to grow less. And when cells grow uninhibited, this can lead to tumor growth and, and related to gastric I think cancer. I, I think we could guess that one too. You can hear your smart. I think so. Kidney, kidney's the only one that came out. They're pretty smart, smart. Yeah. So what I would tell you is that a lot of people are on these for, forever. They start taking them and you can even get them over the counter now. So you take them, you take them for years and years and years and years. But what they've suggested is if you're taking them for any longer than two to four weeks, you probably should reassess why you're taking them, mm -hmm. what the cause of your problem is and whether or not there are other ways to deal with it and whether or not it's possible or practical for you to consider a drug holiday, which is important for a lot of medications. We talked about this before where you essentially stop it for a period of time, hit a reset, see how your symptoms are, and then maybe get back on it. Well, Madonna like said it best. Madonna? Madonna? Her song, Holiday. Oh, it yeah. would be so nice, right? It would. Like any medications, yeah. right? Taking a break is sometimes good. And like any medications, if you can deal with the issue with lifestyle modifications, yes. that's way better than taking a drug to do it. Sure, and we actually have a video about reflux disease with Dr. Aria, mm. you know, about avoiding things like peppermint and gum and mm. some chocolates and, and alcohol caffeine, and yeah. caffeine. Yeah. All the fun things. Probably easier just take the medication. Yeah, but the other thing is don't suffer with these problems either though. So even if you can kind of suck it up and deal with your heartburn, mm. that's obviously not good for you either. So yeah. definitely worth a conversation with your doctor. Leave a comment, let us know your experience with PPIs or any of the side effects. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.